is the Fade Five Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, you dick wagons. Right, the big boys, Evans here, joined by the good sir, Nathaniel Lundy. It is indeed another edition of the Feed 5 Podcast. Coming on uh, a hashtag tequila Thursday, which is a rarity. Uh, usually we do this on Friday, but Lundy, uh, it is a celebration of Casa de Evans. My son, uh, yes, I procreated not once but twice. I don't know how that was even remotely possible, is graduating from high school congratulations zane way to go to make it through those four years gotta be off to college in the fall here locally in shampoo urbana illinois so a very exciting occasion and that's why uh we're tipping back a very tall glass on today's program so that yeah but but here we are this week like here let's peel back the curtain for a second here folks You know, earlier earlier this week, Brad's like, you know, I'm a fancy uh, TV guy, and uh, I can't I can't record the podcast with you but, but because I'm a fancy TV guy. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to record it by myself because I don't I don't need you and your hairdo, <laughs> Lundy. I uh, screw screw you, man. I don't even. You know. I enjoy doing this podcast. I know you do. And uh, uh, you, you, you boxed me out. You uh, you were like, no, rebound's mine. F off, Lundy. Doing it by myself. So I'm happy to be here, even though you're making up your own schedule. Hey, we're going to go on Thursday because my son's a high school grad. Whatever, man. Whatever. Congrats to Zane. You survived. Uh, you did. Have fun. Uh, at, uh, uh, at, at, at UIC, you know, what, uh, W X Y and T. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of letters, uh, in that one. And hopefully, uh, after my son graduated a year ago, uh, from (laughs) university of Illinois, there is still alcohol on campus because he may have drank it all. Uh, well, or I may have taken part in that as well with you at a couple of tailgates here locally, but enough of our nonsense and the various, uh, celebrations we're going to have here at Casa de Evans. Let's jump aboard the Hong Kong plus bus and hop aboard with our favorite plus 100 odds or greater wager of this hashtag tequila Thursday. Lundy, what is packing the most buzz to you? Uh, let's get some buzz going with a two-legger here on the old HRR. If you're, new to, if you're new to the program, first of all, where the hell you been? Uh, and secondly, HRR stands for hits plus runs plus RBI. So it is a, essentially if you've got a baseball player that likes to fill the stat sheet, this is the bet for you. And there's a number of guys uh, that we like across the HRR world, but this is a very light baseball schedule on this particular Thursday. Got a couple of day games uh, taking place, or at least earlier games, uh, including the Yankees and the Twins, and only six games total on the schedule. But here's a couple of players that I do like in the HRR category. Shohei Otani. Why? Because they either walk him and he's on base, and then you get the rest of the crew to come around and knock him around to touch home plate, or... He moon launches one, and he yep. hits the HRR in one swing. It's one of my favorite things about the HRR is that a home run covers all of it as a hit, a run, and an RBI. And we're going to pair that together uh, with the home squad in Beantown. Give me Rafael Devers slash Devers, depending upon how you decide you want to pronounce it. I don't know the guy, so I can't answer, ask him how he wants his last name pronounced, but I keep hearing it different ways. So, you know, the Rafael guy. Uh, for Boston, uh, we're going to take both of those guys on the HRR favorable matchups for them in terms of starting pitching for this evening. Uh, and I like the fact that both of them are playing at home, which I always like to lean into when I'm looking for somebody to have an opportunity to touch home plate. So you put these two together. Why? Because they are juiced up a bit. If I'm not mistaken, they're both at about a minus 150, minus 155. So I'm pairing the two of them together, getting myself a two leg over there at DK plus 170 for your Thursday fun. Yeah, uh, digging that one. Shohei and the uh, Ninja Turtle, Raphael. Uh, good call there, my friend. Uh, let's go uh, to the NFL, shall we? We had the schedule release last night. Uh, the LA Boring. Char- oh, yeah, but the LA Chargers won with their Sims themed, and there's so many Easter eggs that are be- embedded in that uh, video. It's unbelievable. Uh, Harrison Bucker in the kitchen. Uh, I-, I was rolling. I was absolutely. That one was pretty. I-, I will admit that part was was funny. 
Oh, that top fun. notch. Bravo. Way to go, LA Chargers. It's going to be a hell of a lot better than your overall regular season. But let's go to the gridiron, and you can bet on some futures right now and tie for money for months on end, which Lundy loves to do. And I, I say, it. oh, cool. Mr. Burrow is going to make some bucks. So let's start with a bang here. I see he leads the NFL in passing yards, and he can grab that right now at DraftKings at plus 800. Uh, not the craziest, uh, friendliest schedule. Uh, when it comes to Cincinnati, number 17 in terms of hardest, according to Sharp Football. Uh, but a guy, uh, Burrow, he should be healthy. Everything is checking out right now. He's training in the right direction. I think he's going to be 100% uh, at the start of training camp. And fingers and toes crossed, he plays the full slate of games this year. I remember back in 2021, over 4,600 passing yards. That was top six in the league. Back in 2022, he was number five in this category at 4,527. So he's never led the league. And, of course, Patrick Mahomes, is the runaway favorites, uh, but a guy that I certainly believe is going to be in the conversation. He's got one of the best deep ball touches in the entire NFL. He was number two in deep ball accuracy back in 2022 in that uh, last full season that he played, and he still got this dude named Jamar Chase that he's throwing the pill to, one of the elite wide receivers of the league. T. Higgins is still there. Yeah, they got rid of Tyler Boyd. He's in Tennessee now. Uh, but Irwin, Trent Irwin, looks like he's going to be the man there in the slot. A decent tight end play as well. My guy, I-L-L, Chase Brown out of the backfield uh, can definitely be a chunk gainer as a receiver on some of those swing passes. So I say Joe Burrow leads the NFL in pass yards upcoming this fall at plus 800 at DraftKings. I know Lundy will not. Uh, I hate the futures. I hate the fact that you're saying – if he stays healthy, dude, it's Joe Burrow. Be careful uh, if you're using the H word around wow. him, okay? That's all I'm saying. But, hey, you know, some folks like to tie up their money. They see an opportunity with the future, and, you know, to them, it's like buying a stock in their 401K. They're going to sit on it for a little while. I get it. I get it. But, meh, eh, you know, I'm not. I'm not tying up my money yet. Not when I can bet on Shohei Otani every single night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, there's uh, obviously going to be some action on that. Lundy's already got that locked and loaded. Will he be featured in today's Fade 5? Let's get after it with those other bets on the board. Let's tackle the countdown on this hashtag, Tequila Thursday. Number five. All right, numero cinco here on the Fade Five. Uh, again, Thursday edition. Let's go to the W, shall we? In the WNBA, and uh, you might have heard of this individual. Uh, she was the most bet on person on the planet in the player props market in her WNBA debut. And yar, shiver me timbers. Ha 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 ha, you suckers. I gotcha. Uh, that's what Captain Hook said because uh, the number was 20 and a half on her points prop with Caitlin Clark. And what'd she score? Exactly 20. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the over again. I'm going back to that well, and it's going to be replenishing the second time around. She's taking on the Liberty tonight in game numero dos of her pro career. And the numbers come down. It's at 19 and a half. And of course, again, I will take that over at FanDuel Sportsbook at a minus 114 Jews. Uh, you look at uh, Caitlin Clark in that debut. She took 11 threes. She nailed four of them. That is well done, okay? That's kind of her calling card. Uh, she took, uh, you know, over 20 shots. Probably going to be more of the same. Yeah, she only shot 33.3% from the field in that debut. But, uh, you know, opening game jitters likely at play there. She will calm down, get into rhythm and a flow. And you look at the game total in this one. Much higher than her opening game. It's at 172 and a half. So it could be a little bit more zip, 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 zip action. And the Liberty 2, Lundy, they had 20 committed fouls in the first game. And, you know, Kayla Clark has always got the ball in her hands. So she may rack up, you know, 10 or 11 points on freebies alone. So pull that all together. Give me the over on the queen of the props market. That's Caitlin Clark, 19 and a half points at a minus 114 juice at FanDuel. Good, sir. Fade or follow. Um, I'm going to fade, but not because I don't think she's going to hit the 20, but because as popular as her betting has been, um, I was kind of treating it a little bit like a rookie coming into the NFL. I wasn't going to worry about betting on her in the W until she got a couple of games under her belt. Um, yeah. Because I do think some of the commentary that came out from some of the players like, hey, uh, this is a little different than college. Um, you know, it, you've got some different competition and we know that happens in the NFL as well, right? Like all of a sudden you don't have 
Uh, you know, you don't have bad defensive lines you're facing up against. You've got 280 pound dudes that want to rip your head off. Um, and so I think sometimes it takes a little bit to be able to settle in. She's going to be just fine. Um, she's going to be a star. Um, she's going to continue to break television uh, ratings records and good. She should be. But at the same time, I have been staying away and I, I, re I resisted uh, some of the props and some of the boosts and some of the bonuses in her first game because I was like, no, man, you got to give her a chance to get her legs under her, get that first game out of the way, maybe the second game out of the way, which is why for me, I'm going to fade this one, but it's not because I don't necessarily think she's going to score 20. It's just I'm not there yet. I want to see her get comfortable uh, in the uh, in the W and with her teammates. And then uh, let's have some fun. I ain't scared. Make me some cash, Caitlin Clark. Number four. Numero cuatro here on the Fade 5 Countdown. Let's go with the diamond, and let's go with a guy who is dropping bombs or bombs, and that's Alec Bohm of the Philadelphia Phillies. Give me the over on one and a half total bags. Take it on uh, the rival New York Mets at a plus one ten juice, little baby. Seduced by the juice there at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, every time I face a lefty, this is automatic for me. Uh, whether it's on total bases, maybe HRR, a little peppering here and there in the RBI market. Wherever you can find the plus money action, uh, I just go ahead and take it with Alec Bohm because all he does is mash port siders this season, batting 358 with a 9-9. Nine, nine times. OPS on the season against those LHPs. He's hit the over on total bases in four of his last six games. And on top of that, uh, he's got a, a decent history against Jose Quintana. That's the way you got to pronounce it uh, appropriately, uh, from what I've been told, of the New York Mets, who is a left-handed pitcher. He's three for 11 lifetime against them with a double and a home run. So already have a couple of extra base hits under the belt. So that sense of familiarity is going to play a role here. And also, Jose Quintana has got awful when away from New York. This season, 8.20 road ERA. And overall, he's given up a 46% hard hit rate. So pull it all together. Alec Boom, detonate, my friend. Give me the over. One and a half total bags against the Mets. Plus 110 at DraftKings. Good, sir. Better follow. Great history against Quintana uh, and a red hot hitter. Put those two things together. What were we doing about a week and a half ago? The same kind of concept with Bryce Harper. Why? Because he was on fire. Bohm's doing the same yeah. thing right now. I don't want to call it like an auto bet, but he is likely a part of uh, parlays that you're putting together. If you're doing an SGP and you're just like, hey, man, just get me a hit. That's all I need. Nice little piece that you can add into any SGP they're doing right now until he starts to cool off. Like I said, much as we were doing with Bryce Harper about a week and a half ago, Bohm is a guy that should be a part of what you're doing uh, with your baseball betting. Keep riding it, especially against pitchers that he's got a history against nine times. Do it. Love this one, especially at plus odds. Keep bashing with Alec Bohm. Number three. Numero Trace here on the feed. Five Thursday edition of the countdown. Uh, let's go to the north side at Wrigley Field and get a little SGP on the board. And I always bet on Cubs baseball in any market, usually SGPs. Why? I watch every single damn inning uh, this time of year because I'm a die hard Chicago Cubs fan. But bearing the bias, I do like making a hell of a lot of money, or at least try to. Uh, so all this SGP, come with me. If you are buying what I am selling, laying numero uno, give me Jared Jones of the Buckos, who the Cubs are going against for I walk. I just need one. Leg numero dos, give me Justin Steele. Hopefully he's not going to have any kryptonite uh, throwing his general direction. Five or more Ks. And then give me the game under on the all total. Ten and a half runs. Jones a walk, steal five or more strikeouts, and game under 10 half runs, plus 115 at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, give me a little background here on each of these legs. Uh, going to Jared Jones first. Uh, the Cubs are the fifth highest base on balls percentage the last couple of weeks. They're in that free pass, 10.4% of their plate appearances. And Jones just faced his team in uh, B-Town in Pittsburgh on May the 10th, and he gave up not one, but two walks in that one. He's only been over this, uh, you know, a few times this season, and there's got you know, a couple of games in there and walked to Seoul, but the Cubs, uh, Julie, a patient team, 
Uh, and not only that, too, Jones, much higher road ERA compared to with Holmes. So a guy whose command kind of gets away from him at times, away from Pittsburgh. Meanwhile, Justin Steele, five or more strikeouts. I uh, know he was limited early in the season because of that hamstring injury. Uh, he suffered in the opener. He's only done this one time in three starts. The last time he faced Pittsburgh, like a week ago, he got rocked. I was just, they were teeing off a uh, home run after home run after home run, which is very uncharacteristic for the Chicago Cubs A's. Uh, gave up six earned in that game. Only has a 7.43K per nine. But you look at Pittsburgh, number six in strikeout percentage the last couple of weeks, 24.3% of the time to be exact. That's an identical number that they have posted against left-handers this year as well. So, uh, K-Happy team, steal that alt market at home, writes the ship. I think he punches out five. And then uh, I'm going to take the under on that game under 10 and a half. Uh, the Cubs, yeah, they're number nine in WRC+, plus, but they're really not lining up the scoreboard. Nobody is right now in Major League Baseball. The Cubs have been under this um, a total with Royal Devise. Actually, on the standard run line, they've been under in six of their last 10 and seven of the last 10 at home. Pittsburgh, just number 26 in WRC+, plus the last couple of weeks. Uh, this game's got like uh, four to two seemingly written all over it. So nice little cushion to avoid any kind of pushing built in on that all total. So to recap, to recap on the SGP, Jared Jones, one or more walks. Justin Steele, five or more Ks. And the game under on that all total, 10 and a half, plus 115 at DraftKings. Lundy, fair to follow. I'm just going to trust you on the North Siders because I, you, you were just there were a lot of words uh, happening there, and there's there a lot of, of legs here, man. Uh, there's a lot of talking, uh, and you know, I, I, you, you know, and, and you and I talk a lot, but at this point, you added so many. Like, I got a four legger for you coming up in Boston. Oh, wow. We're just going to lose. Everybody's going to tune out. They're going to be like, shut up, Lundy. Uh, like, just can you just tweet it out for us so that we don't have to think and listen any longer? No, those were a lot of legs. Um, really liked, by the way, the under. You're right, man. We're kind of occasionally we're popping with some runs. Uh, but other than that, we're, we're seeing some unders here. Um, yeah. and you know, I don't know if it's just the weird spring weather, you know, slightly cooler air. And Everybody's sudden, got a humidor, apparently. Yeah, and it's going to pop when we get to June uh, or yeah, July. We'll start to see the scoring. That might be what it is. But uh, and other than that, you want to talk about uh, JJ? You want to talk about Steel? Uh, I'll roll with you on that one. Somebody for a walk, five Ks with Steel. That seems about right. So yeah, put it all together plus odds. Uh, yeah, but you you kind of lost me there in the middle. Uh, well, don't lose yourself. Well, hopefully your wallet. Go to thegamingjuice.com right now and roll with some other plays that we're offering. We got action on the Preakness coming up uh, from Nate Jacobson. Ben Wittenstein uh, is writing all kinds of Clayton Clark props on the site, along with some additional WNBA action and NBA action. I'm royally sucking. Lundy probably doing a hell of a lot better with all of his various NHL plays. We cover the smorgasbord of sports betting. Click, converse, and cash. Dot, dot, dot. Maybe. Go to thegamingjuice.com right now and sign up for your free account. Thegamingjuice.com. Get seduced by the juice. Number two. All right, Numero Dos here on the Fade 5 Countdown. I'm going to take the over on a very juicy proposition. That is Tyler Glass now, one of the true aces in Major League Baseball. Of course, he tells the rubber for the L.A. Dodgers. I'm going to take the over on 18 and a half outs against who? The visiting Cincinnati Reds. Uh, we're traveling to Chavez Ravine. I think he's going to work deep into this game. And it's plus 160. Oh, yeah, we'll get seduced by that juice there at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, Luddy, I think this juice honestly should be closer to like minus 110, uh, even on a jacked up prop. Usually, this uh prop is available at 17 and a half. I saw a FanDuel actually, it is at 17 and a half at a minus 152 juice. So, you could take that, maybe parlay with another outs pop or something else to reduce the juice and they get seduced by the juice but this is a standalone 18 half i'd still to play the over on you look at the reds dead last in major league baseball and wrc plus last couple of weeks they've only played at 35 in their last 13 games on top of that they have the second highest k rate Against RHPs, what is especially of Glass now? Missing bats. Uh, I believe he's got three 10 strikeout games in his last five starts. Uh, and a guy that's gone over 18 and a half outs in three of his last four stout, uh, starts. So he may go seven strong in this game. I know his ERA at home uh, a little bit higher than on the road, 3.38 to be exact. 
Uh, but the 6.17 strikeout to walk split is godlike. So put all together, Tyler Glass now over 18 and a half outs. An incredible value in my stupid mind at plus 160 at DraftKings. Good, sir. Fair to follow. You know, I'm thinking about this one. I'm trying to figure out a better way to be able to put it together than this 18 and a half. Because if he goes the flat six and they've got a comfortable lead and the Dodgers decide to be able to bounce him out, roll through a couple of uh, guys in the bullpen instead. So um, you talked about the idea of uh, uh, FanDuel having this at 17 and a half, right? Yeah, um, so correct. if they've got it... I- what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to figure out, could we do something where we go through, we snag him at the 17 and a half and then add the Dodgers on the money line or something. I'm trying to see if there's a way that I can back this down to the 17 and a half, because even with a guy like Glass now and some of the pitchers out there that we that are almost automatic to go into the seventh inning um, or into the sixth inning, excuse me, I, I I still get to the point where I start to get nervous around that sixth or seventh if they've got a comfortable lead. And look, the run line for the Dodgers tonight is two and a half. It's not one and a half. The standard run line is two and a half for them against Cincinnati. That's how much they're expecting the Dodgers to take care of business. So I almost feel like I would like to utilize Glass now because I think he can exploit this Reds lineup, but I'd like to find a different way to be able to play it even like I love the, the the one the one sixty payout on DraftKings on this is huge, but I'd rather yeah. have him at seventeen and a half and put it with something else. Okay, I got an alternative for you. It doesn't uh, takes outs out of the equation, but let me know your thoughts on this. It's a four layer, so just kind of follow me here. And it's a plus one twenty five payoff, and I constructed this at DraftKings. Dodgers on the money line, okay, okay. extremely heavy favorites, and they should be against Cincinnati. Yeah, minus minus three hundred. Uh, give me Tyler Glass now seven or more strikeouts. Uh, again, he's been punching out fools left and right, uh, ridiculously of late, especially. He's gone over this, I believe, in all but two starts this entire year. The Reds have a very high K rate uh, against RHBs. Again, the second highest in baseball. Give me the Reds under on five and a half runs, Lundy, uh, oh, which yeah. they have done uh, 16 of their last 17 games. And then here is the twist at all this. Will Smith, I need a hit out of him. Uh, you got an opener name, uh, Brent Suter, uh, for the Cincinnati Reds. He's an LHP, so more likely Smith's only going to see him one time. Uh, but he has a ridiculous 442 batting average against LHPs this year, and he is riding a three game hit streak. So, Dodgers money line, Glass sells seven or more Ks, Reds under five and a half runs, and Will Smith with that hit plus 125 at DraftKings. That entice you. Yeah, that does entice me because, again, it takes that outs part. Because, like I said, if the Dodgers are sitting there and they're up like five to one, right? I mean, yes, you could continue because you can you can keep from having to go into your bullpen. But you also could look uh, if you're if you're managing, you also could say, well, wait a minute, let me get Tyler out of there um just to be able to save his arm uh, you know whatever so it just it it gets funky for me right around the 6th inning which is why i say you know maybe he goes that flat 6 and you wind up getting hooked which is why i was trying to find a little bit more of a unique way to play around with that one all right we're in on glass now don't shatter fool i need you number 1 all right, numero uno here with the Fade 5 Countdown. Let's go to the land of crispy golden nuggets. And that is indeed Denver as uh, the Nuggets are actually on the road uh, taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves, a mammoth game, obviously. And they have all the upper hand in the world. But will Minnesota push this sucker to game seven? Uh, we shall find out. I'm not getting any action on the spread or the money line on either side of the equation, but I do love me some Aaron Gordon over 10 and a half assists and rebounds. And you get that right now, plus 110 at BetMGM. Really an unsung hero. He's been here last three or four games in this series. So MPJ is uh, kind of checked out. Uh, been in witness protection seemingly. Nikola Jokic doing just his usual stuff. Jamal Murray has really turned up. Uh, his game, but Eric Gordon has been that third contributor and consistently so in points, assists, rebounds, doesn't matter, but focusing in on dimes and on the boards, I think he's going to reach this. Uh, in this series, average of 5.2 rebounds per game, 4.8 assists per game. Uh, so that's 10 exactly, shy of what we need uh, as a part of this, but I think he can still get there. Uh, you look at the last two, 13 and 15 combined. In this uh, couple of categories, and you look at Minnesota, yeah, they're giving up the fewest opponent rebounds per game at 35.9 in the NBA playoffs, but they have allowed 
the ninth most assist per game at 22.7. So you might be pulling up, but I think this is going to be a highly competitive game. Uh, it's going to come down the you know final moments. Maybe Minnesota you know wins it with uh, Anthony Edwards three at the buzzer. Who the hell knows? But Gordon is going to be a busy man doing the little things. That's cleaning up on the glass and of course set up his dues and hopefully they convert on their end so he can grab that assist. So Eric Gordon, my number one play on this hashtag Tequila Thursday, over ten and a half assists and rebounds plus one ten at BetMGM. Lundy, Mister Nuggets fan. Peter, follow. Uh, I'll follow on this one. I will say you're talking about him as an unsung, not here, not locally. Everybody recognizes that Aaron Gordon has gone into playoff mode um, yep. and that he's absolutely vital, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for how they play, in part because there's guys on the Nuggets team that can play good defense. KCP can play good defense. Christian Brown can play good defense. The difference is that uh, Gordon does it, and he does it with size, which – right now this team desperately needs um and so you know there's been a lot of talk about him here locally and how he has uh stepped up don't worry too much about mpj i have a feeling that he will come out of the witness protection program here at some point um this just isn't quite the set, the right matchup for him this is a team that can cause him some headaches uh as much as he wants to get into that catch and shoot rhythm but they can take advantage of things with aaron gordon and with others so um i like this prop with gordon i'll i'll roll with it at the plus odds you might be sweating a little bit in the fourth quarter yeah. uh but i do think this is going to be an incredibly competitive game uh and is going to be a really fun one to watch tonight 8 30 eastern time for the tip off Oh, I can't wait for that action to tip off indeed up there in the layout of 10,000 lakes. Let's go ahead and dive in right now. Boat is time. Boat is time. Uh, Lundy, uh, you have not said anything about the NHL yet. Uh, maybe you got some action there. Maybe you don't. Uh, on the diamond, it's a light slate. Maybe some additional plays in the Nuggets game against the T-Wolves. Do share. Uh, let's roll through a couple of things. First of all, uh, I always like uh, keeping uh, our time in mind. So if you're consuming this super early, like the moment that we post it, uh, Anthony Volpe, give me him for a single, Ooh. specifically a single in uh, the uh, afternoon contest. It's a, just after one o'clock Eastern time, first pitch. Um, so again, you're going to, you, you could be pushing it here, uh, to be able to get this one in time. The reason, uh, that I like it, uh, when you look at his lifetime against Mr. Joe Ryan, he is three for six and all three of those are singles. Volpe is also on an eight game hitting streak. And in that eight games, six of them involve at least a single. He does have two games in there where he only had one hit and one of them was a triple and one of them was a home run. But <laughs> other than that. Six of those eight games, he's had a single. All of his hits against Joe Ryan in his career have been singles, and you can get it. I believe it is sitting at a plus one ten. I can't find Ooh. it in my notes right now because I got I, I can't read my damn uh, my damn notebook here <laughs> in front of me right now. But if I recall correctly, it was plus odds. Uh, so go snag that one while you can early on. Let me stay in. Um, the Major League Baseball scene here for just a moment. Give me the over on total bases for Kyle Tucker, another guy who has been red hot lately. And you believe it or not, you can still get it at plus odds. I'm shocked. At DraftKings, it's yeah. plus 105 uh, right now. So you're almost doing even money. But Kyle Tucker has been red hot. He's at home, and he's taking on the Oakland Athletics. Uh, so you put all that together, and I will take the plus odds on Mr. Tucker there at plus 105. Uh, going back to the idea of just a single, uh, and this guy has been a headache for me this season, but has he finally started figuring it out? Maybe at the plate? Nick Castellanos, give me him for a single as well against Jose Quintana, as we were talking about earlier. Uh, this one is sitting at minus 105, so you're giving up a little bit of juice, but he's got 12 hits lifetime against Quintana, nine of those are a single bagger. So I will absolutely play that one and do so happily. Uh, let me give you a way to be able to play this contest tonight between the Nuggets and the T-Wolves. Uh, I'm going to be more in fan mode than I am in betting mode this evening, folks. So I'm probably not going to have a ton of plays on this, but I do really like this one. Constructed it at BetMGM, and it is even money plus 100. Give me the Nuggets plus nine and a half. Just don't lose by double figures. Brad and I both believe this will be a close game. And the, the natural spread is at two and a half. 
I'm bumping that son of a bitch all the way up to nine and a half, folks. Okay, so the Nuggets just have to keep it within single digits. And then I'm going to play the over on 199 and a half. I just need 200 points to be scored in this game. I believe that will happen. The natural uh, over under on the total is 205. So I'm buying myself basically five, six points worth of cushion. You put that together at BetMGM, folks, it's plus 100. It's even Woo! money. I need 200 points and I need the Nuggets to keep it to single digits or just win outright and move on to the Western Conference Finals, which is also possible if Nikola Jokic decides to go into God mode again tonight like he did on Tuesday. Even money at BetMGM. I'm shocked that I was able to put that one together um, at even money. All right, over in uh, the uh, National Hockey League. Um, let me give you one that'll be minus 112 on the payout, but I'm willing to give up the juice because I think I've given myself plenty of cushion. Give me the over on five and a half total goals to be scored between Vancouver and Edmonton this evening. Frankly, I like the over on the standard line of six and a half, but I'm going to buy it down to a minus five and a half and play the over in this one. Do not be surprised if north of the border tonight, this game goes to overtime. So if that happens, I definitely am more than happy to see this thing go over on the five and a half. And then give me the under on an alt total of seven and a half between the Rangers and the Carolina Hurricanes. These two teams both know how to score. Could they all of a sudden jump up and have a game that is four to three? Of course they could. But they also might be, you know, Krispy Kremes on the scoreboard at the end of the first period. This thing could be 0-0 after the first 20, uh, in which case I feel very comfortable keeping them under 7.5. So, again, Rangers and Canes under 7.5, Oilers and Canucks over 5.5, minus 112, and I constructed that one over at BetMGM. Now, here's the one that you're going to, like, if you're listening to this pod or you're watching us on YouTube, you're going to have to, like, hit rewind to make sure that you get all of this. This is a same-game parlay. All of it are shots, and all of it is two or more shots on goal in the Carolina and New York contest, okay? Sebastian Ajo, two or more shots. Vincent Trocek, two or more shots. Artemi Pernarin, two or more shots. And Jake Gensel, two or more shots. So two guys from Carolina, two guys from the Rangers. If all four of those guys get at least two shots on goal, which consistency over the course of this series and over the course of this postseason, each of them should easily do that payday is a plus 134 but you've got to construct that one over at FanDuel because they are the easiest book for you to take alternate shot totals and play them so each of those guys for two or more quickly Aho, Trocek, Panarin, Getzel plus 134 at FanDuel now because Fancy TV Boy has a TV show to do I have to <laughs> shut up and yield the floor to the fine gentleman from Illinois yeah, let's uh, fly through this here. Team Wamos, partly play of the daytime. Let's go back to that Phillies and Mets matchup on this SGP. Come with me. If you're buying what I am selling, Lake Numero Uno, give me the Phillies on the money line. Lake Numero Uno, give me the Phillies. Three or more runs. Uh, Lake Numero Trace, give me the Mets to score just a run. That's all I need. And Lake Numero Quattro, oh, that dude again, Alec Bohm. Uh, but in this case, I just need a hit. So Philadelphia money line, Philadelphia three or more runs. The Mets a run and Bohm a hit plus 140. And I built that sucker. At BetMGM, uh, just give you a quick background on each of these legs. Uh, Philadelphia eight and two in their last ten, straight up, and uh, they have won four of the last five against the Mets. Uh, the Mets have dropped seven of the last ten overall. So two teams going opposite directions. I think the Phillies, even with Taewon Walker on the bump, uh, get the win today. Uh, meanwhile, you look at uh, Alec Bohm. Uh, the league numero trace there, or quattro, I should say. He's done this in 23 or 25 games. Already mentioned he's been close to 360 against LHPs. Uh, that three for 11 lifetime mark as well against Jose Quintana. Continue to follow it. Uh, Philadelphia, three or more runs. A number eight in WRC plus the last couple of weeks. Uh, again, given the pitching matchup in Quintana with that 8-2-0 road ERA, uh, that's a little hanging fruit. And then the Mets, uh, they scored a run and 10 of their last 11 in there. Yeah, number 22 in WRC Plus, but Tywin Walker ain't any good. So, honestly, uh, this game could be like 8-5 to five Philadelphia in the end. So, put all together, Phillies, money line, Phillies, three or more runs, Mets, one or more run, and boom, a hit. Plus 140 there at Ben MGM. And quickly, last play, Christian Javier, give me the over on strikeouts. That number is at 5.5 at a plus 125 juice against those Oakland C minuses, I guess, is what they are right now. Uh, Oakland has the highest 
uh, K rate on the road this season at 27.9%. Javier, hopefully he's going to go like five plus. Uh, that's always dicey with him. He's got a 7.00K per nine at home. I know he's only been over this in one of five starts this season. But again, I'm picking on the matchup. The A's are a bunch of free swingers. All right, I'm out of breath. I am out of time. And so is Lundy. I got to get the hell out of here. Uh, drop us a rating and review. Would you kindly on this podcast? And Peter, follow us on the X. Lundy, always giving it to you there. At Nate Lundy, I'm doing the same. At Noisy Huevos. For the lovely and talented Nathaniel Lundy, I'm Brad Evans. Until next time, as always, feed or follow. That is up to you.